to see you this morning and thank you so much for joining us this week. We are in John 4 this week and next week and I love how this story unfolds and we talked yesterday about how Jesus has actually walked away from the Pharisees and their attitude and kind of what they were about. Jesus is not about. He's not about the competition or uh, the tally sheet. He is about his father's purposes and that's where we find him today. We are going to back up just a little bit. We were in John 4 yesterday. Um, John 4, 1 through 3. We're going to back up to verse 3 and go in through till 6, but really we're just going to key in on 4. <laughs> so if you catch all that. Um, I'm going to read here in John 4, 3. It says, he, indicating Jesus, left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And this is important. And he had to pass underline if you underline or circle again that's a very important phrase and he had to pass through Samaria so he came to a town of Samaria called Sakar near the fields that Jacob had given to his son Joseph Jacob's well was there so Jesus wearied as he was that's important that's going to be important on later days uh, from his journey was sitting beside the well it was about the sixth hour like I said, we're going to key in on verse 4 today only. It's a very short verse, but there is a lot to the statement that's made in that part of the scriptures. Um, it says when the wording he had to pass was not technically true. That was not true. We would read that as there was no other option. As a woman, I want to know my options. I want to know what I can choose, what's going to be the most efficient. I'm, I'm constantly working a plan. I was just at breakfast not too long ago with my girlfriends, and we were talking about how many times in life where something will happen, and what you do, just your default as a woman sometimes, is just to reformulate a plan. Something goes wrong, something goes awry, the plan kind of changes, and you just kind of gather yourself, and okay, now this is my plan. And okay, we're gonna be okay, this is the plan. And so when I say he had to pass, to me, that means that was the only option. But that wasn't technically true. If you look in commentaries and read a little bit further into it, it says there was actually several other options that he could have taken. There were actually three possible routes along the coast, across the Jordan or straight through Samaria. So there were plenty of ways he could have gone. He chose to go through Samaria. He chose to be at that well. And that is wildly important for us to understand that Jesus chose kingdom purposes. He chose to be positioned to receive his calling. He chose to be right where he was, positioned right where he was, doing right what he was doing by choice. Even though there were a lot of other options, he had to pass. It says, had to actually translates in the Greek, to be necessary. That phrase, had to, translates in the Greek, to be necessary, which always indicates divine necessity or requirement elsewhere. Jesus was on a divinely appointed schedule. But here's what's interesting. It says that Orthodox Jews avoided Samaria. So they would have had nothing to do with Samaria. So he's just left the mo most Orthodox situation, Jewish situation you could possibly be in. He was with the Pharisees, okay? They are like the upper echelon, like they're the guys, okay? And he's just walked away from that and then almost in kind of like a you know holy courageous rebellion he's decided to go exactly where they would strategically by choice again avoid they would never have gone there because there was a long-standing deep-seated hatred between them and the samaritans the samaritans were basically like spiritual nuts just being honest it was a collection of Jewish and Gentile, a lot of marrying, intermarrying. It was just kind of a melting pot of sorts. And we don't have time today to go into all of what that is, but it was basically just like they were not, they were the uh, Orthodox Jews were purist and Samaria was not a purist situation. And they would uh, have avoided it at all costs, at all costs. I wonder, when I read that, and when I was kind of uncovering that, and I was thinking in my own personal life, I was thinking about situations where God has called me to do certain things, and there have been 
some deep-seated matter and metal inside my own personal heart that has kept me from being in full obedience. There have been places where God has called me to or situations that God has called me to engage in or um, opportunities or relationships or some things where um, I know God is saying, go this way by your choice. I want you to go this way because this is obedience. And there's some deep-seated matter keeping me from that kingdom purpose. I wonder what manner of, of stuff, of, of things, experiences, past, our own limitations. I wonder what metal stirs up in our heart, what long-standing, deep-seated matter is keeping us from kingdom purposes. I know you're thinking of something. I know you are. We all have something that's deep-seated, a fear, maybe this overriding fear that comes over us and says, oh, if that's, if it's gonna go this way, I just know it. We don't know. We don't know until we try, and we will sh for sure never know if we never try. And I am so grateful that God laid out this example and showed us how Jesus was willing to go exactly where God had called him. He was on a kingdom errand. Like it said, it was a divinely necessary placement for him to go through Samaria. Jesus was on a divinely appointed schedule. It was necessary that he go through Samaria. Why? Because God had called him there and he would meet a woman there and lead her into saving faith, the kind of true faith with, that would affect an entire village. Jesus was there for her. Jesus came to that place and was stayed and love kept him going and propelling and continuing on that journey. Even though there was all this backwash of all these deep-seated things, that means that generations and generations had done it a certain way, and yet Jesus said, I am on kingdom purposes, and nothing was going to keep him from making it to that well and making it to that woman. I want you to make note and be excited for what God's going to uncover tomorrow because it says in verse 6, we finished it off today, it says, So Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. It is so important for us to make note today for tomorrow that Jesus got to that well and he was wearied, that he was there, that he was on kingdom purposes, that nothing, no, no manner of deep-seated material was going to keep him from being at that well at that time, in that moment, to meet that woman. But he was tired. We're going to talk tomorrow about how Jesus was fully human and yet also fully God. It is going to be beautiful how he continues to uncover this. I hope that today you are able to uncover ways in which you are letting go of things that have laid heavy on your heart and your soul, fears, reservations, deep-seated sin, experiences from your past, things that are deep-seated that are keeping you from kingdom purpose. Let us throw them off. In the New Testament, it says, Throw those things off that keep us from running free. Let us run free and let us do it by our choice. Let us follow the example that Jesus said, that it was by his choice that he was not going to be prevented from getting to that kingdom purpose that God had for him in that moment. I cannot wait to see you tomorrow.